Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Got a scripture for you before we pray. It's found in Psalms 100, verse 4, verse 3. Verse 4. This is something we can put to practice today. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. People, it has been a long time out of church. I got excited. Yeah. I was so excited I put a suit on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just ask that you keep us all safe from this disease, this virus, Lord. And Lord, we pray also for our safety as far as Offending anybody by having this service, Lord. Lord, we ask for your protection and health. And health is very important to us. Protect us from any offenses that we may hurt somebody's feelings by being here. Protect us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go with be seated. Uh, Christina, you want to lead us in some of the songs? Uh, no, she's going to pass up. Page 14. <laughs> And then we'll do uh, a live alive afterwards. Okay. Sound good? Sounds good. Okay. So what so what which page? Fourteen. Fourteen. This is gonna be the best song day ever because we're kind of muffled, so you won't hear our best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Which one? Uh, number uh, 14. Ama yeah. It's amazing what praising can do. Oh, okay. Okay. Ready? One, yeah. two, three. It's amazing what praising can do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's amazing what praising can do. Oh, 
reaching up the mighty star, then I'd marvel at the wisdom of my God. When the Lord said, let the weak say I am strong, down in my heart I thought he said it wrong. When I saw the little lily pushing up the mighty star, and I marveled at the wisdom of my God. Oh, I marveled at the wisdom of my God. Yes, I marveled at the wisdom of my God. When I see the little lily pushing up the mighty star, then I marvel at the wisdom of my God. When they crucified the Father's only Son, and they laid it in the tomb they thought they won, then just like the little lily, he pushed back the mighty star, and I marveled at the wisdom of my God. Oh, I marvel at the wisdom of my God. Yes, I marvel at the wisdom of my God. When I see the little lily pushing up the mighty star, then I marvel at the wisdom of my God. Number seven, this Number is the day. <laughs> okay, this is the day. Okay. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Right underneath. I have heard a cry going out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Open prison doors, set the captives free. I've never heard a lie going out of me. Spring up, oh well. Within my soul, spring up, oh well. And make me whole, spring up, oh well. And give to me that Well, this is certainly different. Yeah. But it is church, people. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to teach you. Well, first of all, uh, Sharon Reitz is very sick. Mm -hmm. uh, she's overdone it, really. She's doing more than what she should do. And she's very sick. And you need to pray for her. Uh, she is cleaning up somebody else's mess that they made for her. And, uh, she really, really wanted to be here today. I called her this morning. She sounded terrible. And you need to pray for us. Let's have a word of prayer for sure. Lord Jesus, we just ask for your love and your mercy that you reach down and touch Sharon. Help her, Lord, with the sickness she has. Lord, give her strength. Renew her strength, Lord. And Lord, I ask that you shift the responsibility of, of this, the cleaning she's got to do uh, onto those that caused it, Lord. Help her, Lord, and give her strength, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to teach you a verse today. And the verse is this. And it came to pass. Now, where is it found? Well, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> it, it is found 687 times in the Bible. 
<laughs> 687 times in the Bible there is reference to or similarities to this that it came to pass and pe people were facing a uh, uh, virus pandemic whatever you want to call it uh, and it came to pass you know the, the neat thing about it God put in his word says it came to pass now it would be terrible if something like this came on us and it, God says and it came to stay mm -hmm. but all through the Bible there's been situations there's been problems there have been bad things happen and it came to pass people it came to pass it isn't here to stay it's it's going to pass and that's what I, I want to get across to us today that's what we're facing today will pass it's not here to stay there is a future and uh, here, here's another one for you it's found in, in Romans 8.28 Romans 8 20 uh, 8 it says this and, and now listen to this it's going to be catchy it says and we know hello Amen. we know it does not say we hope we think we, we maybe it says, it says and we know that all not just a few this not sometimes or maybe or whatever it says and we know that all things work together mm -hmm. for good for them that love God now there's there's some real important things here we've got to know it and we got to realize all, not uh, whatever problem you're facing today, it may be a good problem, it may be a bad problem, but it will work together. That doesn't mean everything that's going to happen to you is going to be good. It means that they're going to work together. So it says, all things work together for good. You will have bad things happen to you. Your life will face tragedies. But it will all work together for good. Now, another stipulation on this is here. It says, for to them that love God. You've got to love God to uh, accept this promise from him. If you don't love God, this 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 whole contract is null and void. No warranty. No guarantee. But if we love God, and we should know, says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Whatever you're going through today, it doesn't mean it's all going to be good, but whatever you're going through today will work together for you if you love God. It'll work together. I want to take us uh, to a little trip. We're going to go to Genesis chapter, starting action, chapter 30. There's just one little part in here that uh, is talking about Jacob. And Jacob, uh, it says right there in Genesis chapter 30, I didn't write the verse down, but there, there is where it's recorded <coughs> that Joseph was born to Rachel and Jacob. We're going to go on to chapter 37. 
this is where we really get into the life of this Joseph. Joseph, is that the father of Jesus? No. No. Okay. No. This is uh, Joseph. Joseph, the, the sons of Israel. Okay. He's the one they ended up in Egypt. Okay. Okay. Now, I, I did some digging on this. And the best that they could tell, this happened in 1746 B.C. This, this, this is uh, over 3,000 years ago, people. It wasn't two centuries ago. This is 3,000 years ago that Joseph was born. Now, if we go to chapter 37, and what I'm going to show you is what we had in, in, in the beginning there is Romans 8 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. I'm going to show it to you. Now, uh, Joseph had a marvelous uh, life. I mean, no problems, no sweat, no tears, no harassment. <laughs> Not. <laughs> I wouldn't give you a nickel for his his early life at all. It was terrible. And it starts in in Genesis chapter thirty-seven, verse three. Now, Joseph, understand this. Joseph had a bunch of brothers, one full fledged brother and a bunch of half brothers from different wives and so on of, of Jacob. But he only had one one real true brother. These were half brothers and best I can tell they were all older than him. Uh, when he was when Joseph was 17 years old his dad loved him and loved him a lot and he gave him a coat of many colors now back then no one has got a, a printed shirt with different colors on it but, uh, you can go to uh, J.C. Penney's or wherever and buy a shirt or a coat of many colors mm -hmm. but to produce this to have it took a lot of skill a lot of hard work and they didn't go down and buy it but it took a lot of labor to have a coat of many colors and if you had a coat of many colors that was very special well in verse 3 of chapter 37 we see that his dad gives Joseph a coat of many colors which uh in verse 4, his brother says, Oh, we're so proud of you. Oh, we love you so much. No. They hated him. Mm -hmm. Now, what did Joseph do to cause his brothers to hate him? Nothing. Was he going through a difficult time? Yes. See, the world can be rough on you and you don't have to do anything to provoke it. And we, we, we like to say, well, things just happen. Well, they certainly do happen. And not all of them are good. What is happening in the world today is not good. And I, I know a couple that got their cars stolen. I don't want to mention any names. But they took not only their car, but their their <laughs> their tables and their their <laughs> the produce that they had for selling. Stole it all. What did they do to provoke this? Nothing. I don't think. <laughs> no, they didn't do anything to provoke it. But bad things happen to good people. But 
remember, we're going to see that it all works together. And Joseph could not look way ahead. So, well, you boys might hate me today, but you're going to love me tomorrow. <laughs> he, could, he couldn't see that. <clears throat> it wasn't there. Only God knows what he's doing in, in situations like this. To have uh, a whole bunch of half-brothers that hate your guts is not good. It's not a good thing. So it says right there that uh, 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 they hated him and they couldn't, they couldn't even speak nice to him. I imagine they probably had some four-letter words that they <laughs> called him. I, I don't know how, how many letters Hebrew would have in it. But they, 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 they didn't like it. And they, they weren't quiet about it. They let him know, I don't like you. <laughs> so what is, what, is, what is Joseph doing to cause this? Nothing. But God had a plan. Now, if that wasn't bad enough, verse 5, what happens to Joseph? He starts having dreams. <laughs> wow, dreams. Out of this world, dreams. Actually, dreams sent from God. So his brothers, I, I suppose, come to him and says, we love you more now. <laughs> Not at all. It says in, in verse 5, it says, they hated him even more. First they hated him, now they hate him even more. It's not getting any better. You're going through something in your life, then something else happens, and it, it actually worsens the, the, the soup that you're living in. This virus outbreak is bad. And maybe you're going through things that are rough. Not only is the virus bad, but people are, are in danger of losing their jobs. Right, brother? Yeah. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? If one thing isn't bad enough, it gets worse. That's what happened to, to Joseph. It was bad, now it's getting worse. Going on. So what does he do? Now, here, here, here's... Southern people. Now, at this time, Joseph was 17 years of age. 17 years old. And 17 years old, you're not fully developed in your brain. In fact, sometimes you can do things stupid. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joseph did something that wasn't really too bright, but I is is the plan of God, I guess. I'm sure. Uh, he tells them about his dream. Woo! Yeah. And uh, in verse eight, his brothers asked. He said, "Will you rule over us? Huh? What do you think you are, punk? You gonna rule over us?" Not loving people. He, he, he tells them about the dream, and it just, it just makes the whole situation worse. He's trying to do good. He isn't. He's showing no hate to them, but they just keep making it worse and worse and worse. Well, that wasn't good enough. <laughs> Verse 9. Well, back in verse 8, uh, it says they, they even hated him more. How can you hate person, a person more than more than more? Well, they did it. They, they were good at it. They developed more hate, more hate, more hate. Ah! Terrible. But uh, verse, verse 9, Lo and behold, Joseph has another dream. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Now this, this dream uh, 
he told his, the dream to his brothers. <clears throat> that just sparked a lot of love in his <laughs> brother's life. Oh, Joseph, Goody Poo. They hated him. I mean, it, it, it just, you could. And not only that, verse 10, he tells his dad. And his dad rebukes him. I mean, this, this didn't go over good with his dad. He says, uh, what, what are you, uh, what are you doing? He rebuked him. But he also, uh, Joseph also, I mean, Jacob also noticed something that how his brothers, Joseph's brothers, reacted. And he, he was displeased with their attitude toward Joseph. But he didn't do anything about it. And so here, at this time, I, I believe Joseph's mother had passed away. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But she, she died in childbirth, bringing his full-fledged brother into this world. And uh, I think that he was alone as far as having any family other than his dad and his little baby brother. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have any support at all. And when his dad turns on him and jumps on him about it, you see, mm -hmm. it's the only thing he had. Well, it's time for him to quit getting his 57 Ford and leave the country. <laughs> you know, desert his family. You guys can have it. I quit. I'm through. <clears throat> he stuck with it. It takes a, a very special relationship with God to withstand what Joseph was taking. Probably something I need to practice on myself a lot. Because <laughs> it it was their their criticism, their attitude was uncalled for, not justified, yet they they persisted in in the harassment and nastiness that they were throwing at Joseph. People, there was a plan of God yet, even though that Joseph was going through this. Going on farther. It says in verse 11 that his, uh, his brothers envied him. Verse 13, says it uh, Jacob his brothers go out take care of the sheep way up yonder across the hill through the valley on the hillside mm -hmm. back over you know far out his dad had a job for him now see his dad just rebuked him over this dream that he had but uh, his dad had a job for him to do. And he, Joseph responded quickly. You know, how many kids today, now look, we're talking about a 17 year old kid. He says, how many kids 17 years old would, when his dad chewed him out, and then his dad has a job for him to do? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, well, you know what you do with your job? If you want it done, do it yourself. <laughs> what did Joseph do? He responded quickly to, to the job. His attitude was totally different than 99.9% .9 of the people in the world today. But he loved God. He responded quickly in verse 14. Uh, his dad sent him, and he went. He 
got out there where he thought his brothers were first 15, and he couldn't find them. Where on earth are they at? They were supposed to be in, in this valley here, and they're not here. I, I don't know. And he ran into a stranger there, and the stranger told him where his brothers had lived. So he proceeded to tr chase down his brothers, find out where they're at, make sure that everything's okay. Verse 18, the brothers, these are half-brothers now, the ones that, the loving half-brothers that hated his guts, <laughs> they couldn't stand him. Here, his half-brother saw him coming and, uh, they conspired to kill him. You see how far the hate had gone where they actually uh, thought about killing him? Mm -hmm. Verse 19 says, Ugh! Here comes that dreamer! That wasn't a loving comment that he made. Verse 20, they, they, they decide, let's kill him and make up a story. Then we'll see what happens with his fancy dancing dreams. Mm -hmm. You got plans? People don't appreciate it. They criticize you for it. And they're, they're on to your case. Joseph had the same thing. You know, Joseph's life here stinks. It was it was rotten. It was terrible. It was, it was terrible. Things he couldn't do anything to make people happy. Ever been there? If you haven't, well, follow me around. <laughs> I'll show you what I'm talking about. But he just couldn't do anything to make him, make him happy. He didn't do anything against them. But they just couldn't accept anything that he did do. Give his brothers a banana. <laughs> ah, it's too ripe. You know. Give him an apple. Ugh, it's too green. Whatever he did, they turned it against him. Now, fortunately. Uh, he had a half-brother by the name of Reuben, and Reuben put a stop to it, this, this idea of killing him. Then they came up with the idea, verse 22, as let's throw him in a pit. I think what it was was a, a dry well. And, uh, but, and Reuben had the idea, he says, uh, uh, later I'll come in get him out of there. Mm -hmm. Send him on back to dad. So while they, they verse 24, they threw him into this dry well, I believe it was, his, his pit. But I think really what it was, was dry well, threw him in that dry well. And, uh, and verse 25, being a loving, concerned brothers that they were, they sat down and ate. <laughs> <laughs> sit down and have a good helping of Kentucky Fried Chicken uh -huh. while your brother's sitting in a pit for nothing that he had done wrong. But it, it, mm -hmm. it offended them so greatly. Well, as they, they sat there, they uh, noticed something going on way out there, back back 80 acres or whatever, you know, there was a caravan going through, headed to Egypt. Hey, maybe we could sell the, this jerk in the pit to this caravan and make a little dinero, you know? <laughs> uh, you know, we have, we have, a little spending money. 
So uh, that's what they did. They, they sold him. Judah came up with the idea. Says, Let's don't kill him. We'll sell him. And that made his brothers happy. First time they've been happy about just for years or all their life <laughs> is when they're going to make a little money off of selling him as a slave. They sold him for 20 pieces of silver. You know what the price in the Bible times talked about? 30 pieces of silver was the price for a slave. He didn't even bring in enough money to equal the price of a slave. <laughs> sort of makes me regret the day I sold my brother. <laughs> But uh, and they they took off with him, took him to Egypt. Reuben later came to rescue him. This verse twenty nine, and and he was totally upset when he found out what they'd done. He planned on rescuing uh, Joseph and sending him back to Dad, but he was gone. And you, you see how these things are happening to Joseph. And what good can ever become of this situation? I mean, you, you, you sit there today and you say, what good can come of the situation that I'm in? It's not getting any better. It's getting worse. It's just piling up, piling up, piling up, piling up. It's, it's worse every day. Well, verse 30, the plan goes on. They, they plan to cover what they did by taking uh, Joseph's coat of many colors, staining it with blood, telling the dad, you know, uh, we don't know what happened to him. <coughs> God, me. Presumably dead. That's, this is all we could find of him. We couldn't find his body. We just found his his coat. Liars. The worst part about it, uh, the dad, Jacob, verse uh, 30, 36, I guess. Uh, no, 34. Uh, you can see that his dad was going into mm -hmm. deep depression. He was, I mean, he was, he was broken hearted like you wouldn't believe. And they tried to cheer, cheer him up in verse 35. Uh, and there was nobody that could bring him out of it. Now when we go to, chat, uh, to verse 36, we see that Joseph is in Egypt and he was sold to uh, a guy by the name of Potiphar. As a slave. Now, in verse, in chapter 39, in verse 4, it says, Joseph found grace in Potiphar's sight. You know in Hebrews 13, 5, it says that, uh, that Jesus says, I'll never leave thee nor, nor forsake thee. You know that? Where, where, where was Jesus when I needed you? Where was Jesus when I was in the pit? Where, where was Jesus when they calling me names when they sold me. Where was Jesus? You see, God had a plan, people. Mm -hmm. And we have to accept God's plan in blind faith. See, if you 
if you knew what's going to happen tomorrow, exactly what everything is going to happen tomorrow, you would enter tomorrow and you would need no faith. Well, I know what's going to happen anyway. <laughs> but you don't. You're going to face tomorrow in blind faith. And that's what God requires of us is blind faith in God. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds the future. Amen. You see what we're, we're saying here? You're going through difficult times. It isn't because God has left you. It's because you're having to live in blind faith. He knows. He's got a plan for you. <coughs> I'm not going to go through this mess in Potiphar's place. Potiphar finally puts Joseph in, in charge. He <coughs> found grace in Potiphar's sight. God gave Potiphar the ability to see the quality of the person that Joseph was and Joseph advanced in the house of Potiphar. Except <coughs> Potiphar had an idiot for a wife. Does never say call her an idiot in the Bible, but she was. And uh, you can read about it. I'm not going to go into it. But he got in trouble because of Potiphar's wife. Then, verse 20, we're still in chapter 39. Joseph was put in prison. Oh my God. <laughs> Put in prison for a crime I didn't do. Sold as a slave. I didn't do anything wrong. People, you can't get it much worse. You can't. And in this prison, uh, the prisoners were bound. Uh, doesn't say how they were bound, but it might have been in the old stock, you know, lock your legs and feet into stockades. Is that what they call them, stockades? But anyway, uh, they said they were bound. You didn't have the, the freedom to, to scratch your head or pick your <laughs> nose, you know? It, it was a bad situation. Verse 21. Listen to this. The Lord was with Joseph. And the Lord showed him mercy. And the Lord gave him favor in the sight of, of the keeper. You see, even though you can't see God, even so, though you cannot see the <laughs> Lord working in your life, He's doing something. Yeah. I, don't, I don't understand uh, up to this point, what what good could, could ever come out of Joseph's life in all this, this mess? The, the Lord was, was still with him. Now in verse 22, the keeper put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners. Well, if you're going to sit in jail, you might as well be uh, in charge of everything. But uh, as... Uh, that's not like being able to walk through Bowberry Park, you know. You're still in jail. You still got the stink, you got the gripes, you got the, the uh, Steve worked in a situation with prisoners and so like that to where uh, it's not a fun place at times, most of the time. Well, verse 23. Listen to this, people. The Lord was with him, with Joseph, and whatsoever that Joseph did prospered. Whatever he was working at, he did it, did it good. You know how easy it would be this? <laughs> I'm not going to go to church anymore. 
doesn't work. There's no help there. I suffer as much in church as out. You know what? I can't compare anything to what Joseph was going through. <laughs> now, here we come in. Now, remember, Joseph was 17 years old when he was sold as a slave. How old was he? 17. Uh -huh. And here in Genesis chapter 40, Joseph was 28 years old. Hello? I think that's what they call a long time. 11 years. Maybe 10, but, you know, I can't get the exact dates, but, you know, 15 minutes is a long time in jail. I know because I've been there. <laughs> Here in verse 40, or chapter 40, we see that we have a situation with a, a butler and a baker in prison. And they had a, a dream. And Joseph interpreted the, the dream and says, the butler, he's going to go back. Mm -hmm. But the baker, your end is, is here. And uh, it happened just like Joseph told him it would happen. And Joseph talks to him and says, you know, if you, if you can't remember me when you get on the outside. Well, he, he, got, he got loose all right. And went back to his old job. Now, we're going to go to uh, chapter 41. Now remember, the dream come at the age of 28. Now we're with Joseph and the Pharaoh had, had a dream. He couldn't <coughs> understand. He couldn't explain it. And, and the mother said, Oh yeah! I remember this guy back in prison that could interpret dreams. How long had it been? Remember the dream said for the butler and the baker was at the age of 28. Mm -hmm. Here, Joseph's dream, I mean, uh, the Pharaoh's dream, came when Joseph was 31 years mm -hmm. old. From 17 to 31 is a long time, people. Now, uh, if, if you know the story at all, you know that uh, he interpreted the dream and the Pharaoh took Joseph mm -hmm. from the time of being a, a prisoner and made him second in command of the whole country. Wow! God does have a plan. And not only this, remember the dreams that Joseph had a long time ago about him. his dad, his brothers and all that? That God had started the the whole big trouble in the first place. Mm -hmm. Well, here he was, he was in charge of everything in in uh, in Egypt. He interpreted Pharaoh's dream, and back in his homeland, his brothers, his family back there were getting hungry, mm -hmm. and they came to Egypt to see if they could buy buy some chicken noodle soup <laughs> or something. Maybe it's badoodle. I, I don't know that. I don't know that. But when his brothers came and fulfilled the dreams that Joseph had, Joseph was 39 years old. A gap of 22 years difference. Now, people, I pray <laughs> that you're not going through something that's going to take 22 years to go through. 
that in order for him to fulfill the promises of God, he, if, if his brothers had been mad at him, if his brothers had planned to kill him, if the brothers had sold him into slavery, if Pharaoh, uh, 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 if uh, Potiphar, his wife had been stupid, and all these things, see, this never would advance. And there was absolutely nothing going good in Joseph's life from the uh, pre-17 to 31. There was nothing good. If you if you had uh, a bowl, say, put the good things in here, the bad things over here, the good things bowl would be, in my estimation, totally empty. Mm -hmm. The bad things, I mean, it, <laughs> the bowl was busting at the seams. You're going through things, and you do, just don't see how it's ever going to be good. God has got a plan. In fact, it says in Jeremiah 29, 11, it talks about it. It says, I've got a plan for you and, and not to do you bad, but make things good. But you may have to go through some mud to get to, to the good stuff. You see, God's got a plan for you. And you may be having a very, very difficult time for you right now. But God's got a plan for you. 22 years. I, I just, that, there's, there's nothing, I just want to touch this. Mm -hmm. One other story. It's the story of Ruth. The book of Ruth. Here, here's a, a woman that uh, actually the, the the book is written about a woman by the name of Ruth. But uh, mm -hmm. Naomi is the one that I really want to deal with. Uh, it starts in chapter 1, verse 1, talks about uh, this man, his wife, two sons, Elimabet and Naomi, had to move because of the drought. Now, when you, at this time, you did not uh, go get your U haul van to haul your stuff to the next neighborhood. You take what you can on the back of it. Donkey, perhaps maybe you got a cart to carry a little bit of stuff. When you move, you move mm -hmm. yourself. That's about it. So there was a drought in the country, and his husband, the husband, says, "We better go on home to Moab. They're having better weather over there. Things are growing. We stay here. Uh, the kids are going to die. We're going to die." Let's get on out of here. Oh my goodness. I hate to leave everything. We've got land here or something like that. We've got to leave it. Well, so they go. And verse 3, what happens? You get into a foreign land. You know, I, I, I read this story and I can see story of possibly some of the Mexican people that live here today. They left bad situations over there and come to the United States and mm -hmm. uh, they get here and things aren't turning into better. Her husband dies. Verse 3. Chapter 1, verse 3. Her husband dies. And, uh, the two boys are, are are married now. Verse four. Uh, uh, they're married about about ten years. Married uh, a girl by the name of Ruth Milbra. Mm -hmm. Well, verse five. Lo and behold, the boys die. Now there's. This is going into history, not not in the Bible, but the 
They said at that time, that particular time frame, mm -hmm. the, the people of Moab were at war. And they have an idea that the, the two boys joined the military and may have been killed in battle. Don't know, don't know but it, it's interesting that young men would die, you know. But it says it could be that they were in the military because they did have a war at that time. And both the boys dying like that, it may have been they were killed in service. Well, verse 6, uh, I mean, poor Naomi, she, she was terrible mm -hmm. condition. She says, you know, there's nothing here for me. I'm going to go back to my home country. And she had got word that the drought was over in her homeland. She was going to go back. Well, I'm not going to cover the whole story, <laughs> but uh, she went back. Oh, uh, here's something interesting. Ruth, now see, even in a bad situation, in a bad situation, Naomi was witnessing to Ruth at Oprah. She was witnessing to him. Ruth believed. Now she was a, a pagan girl. Both of them were. Ruth believed what Naomi was telling her about God. Over oh, did. Now here's here's something just a little sideline. This Oprah, she turned and went back to her home land. The Ruth says, I'm gonna stay with you, Naomi. I'm gonna go where you go. I'll live where you live. I'll eat what you eat. I'll die where you die. But Oprah went back. History, not the Bible, history says that Oprah was the mother of the giants mm -hmm. that David, King David had to fight years later. If you turn from God, if you turn, see, they were both exposed to God, exposed to the, the testimonies of the Word of God. One accepted it, one turned away. After he turned away, back. To become hell on earth with those giants. Be very careful. You think you got it bad now? Turn your life back into sin and it's going to be worse, a lot worse. I don't know whether it's true or not, but that's, that's <clears> what some of the history says. It. She was the great grandmother of Goliath that David killed. Mm -hmm. Interesting story. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's, it's interesting. It, it just shows you what, uh, what turning can do to you. Naomi went back into her home country and they, when the people saw her, they couldn't even recognize her. Said, Is this Naomi? Is this Naomi? That, that girl that left to, to go to Moab? She looks terrible. Mm. She's wore out. She's, <clears throat> she's beat up. She's, you know, the grief had just <laughs> withered her. And then she went back to her her home, or what was her home, and she had no right to claim it. But read the story. It's a beautiful story. Uh, how uh, Ruth, the daughter-in-law, met Boaz. Boaz had a thing going for her. He says, "Woo, that she's cute." Ah. Uh, they, they eventually got married and had a, a family and uh, Ruth and Boaz took Naomi in and her end was beautiful. She had a home, she had uh, 
Boaz was a rich man. She was supplied for. She uh, get to li live with her, her grandson. And it is wonderful. But see, bad things happen, 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 happen. And we don't understand it. We don't know why. Because we face every tomorrow blindly. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. By the way, here, here's, here's a little history for it. Boaz, Ruth and Boaz, had a son by the name of Obed. Obed had a son named Jesse. Jesse had a son named King David. Boom, 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 boom. See how if, if she had a went to Moab, she never would have known of Ruth. Ruth would never come over and meet Boaz. And the, the line uh, of history, of, of generations, would not have been. Hey, people, do you realize that God had a plan all the time? Now, going back to verse here, we had a bit. So, are you saying that God's got a plan for us? <laughs> Romans 8.28, people listen. And we know that all things work together. Not all things are good, but all things work together for them that love God. Well, the, the story of Joseph, people, uh, it shows me that even though Joseph was deserted by his brothers and was balled out by his dad and all these things, you know, even those things just were bad, 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 bad. And he didn't do anything to deserve it. It all worked out for the glory of God. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> but people, listen. We see little inter intermissions in Joseph's life. God was taking care of him. He found favor. That these things were happening. And where the whether Joseph realized it or not, I don't know. Now I'm sure that Naomi didn't see any good and all these things her boys dead and husband dead, can't claim my own house, you know, come back to my home home, mm -hmm. can't live there, all this, you know. And she felt it too. She she was one that said that, you know, I wish I was dead. It'd be better dead than living this kind of People, trust me. God knows you. God created you. God's got a plan for you. He's promised it in His Word. And people, we, we need to face tomorrow in faith that God's got to do something wonderful for us. If, 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 it, if it isn't tomorrow, it's coming down the road. Do you understand what I'm saying? Those that are having problems, troubles, situations. Don't give up on God. He just, uh, uh, God may have to do some awfully strange and seemingly cruel things to you to get you to where he needs you. What happened to Naomi was cruel. But he needed Ruth to follow Naomi back to the homeland to marry Boaz to Start the chain of events. What happened to Joseph was cruel. But he had to do that to get Joseph to be in second in command of all Egypt to take care of his family. He came up there to, to keep from starving to death from the whole man. 
Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. as, as people, we have problems, a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. I, 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 won't, I, won't, I won't even attempt to say I know what you're going through or say that I understand what God is trying to do in your mind. I ain't got to try that. I don't. I don't even know what he's doing in my own life. But I know who holds the future. And I know he holds my hand. So him. Let's stand in prayer. People are all going through troubles. They all got problems. <laughs> Let's commit our problems into the hands of God. We don't understand it. I don't understand it. But if your life is committed to Jesus Christ, believe me, He has a plan for each and every one of us, every individual. He's, he's <coughs> in charge. He'll take care of us. God loves us. He's got a plan for us. You know, in, in, in doing this study, I, I searched out some of the problems many, many people in the Bible had. But the end of their life, if they loved the Lord, the end of their life was rewarded above anything else that they had experienced before. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. Lord, there's so much in this world we do not understand. And Lord, we commit it into your hands. I don't understand it. None of us understand it, the situations we're going through. But Lord, help us to give that blind faith that we know that you're in charge. And the blind faith that all things work together, all things, for good. To that I love the Lord. We thank you, Jesus. I just ask that you help us, Lord. Keep us, Jesus, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, people. <laughs>